There are a few people on the planet who can easily be identified by one name. Madonna, Beyonce, Bono and definitely Nigella. Since Nigella Lawson burst onto the global cooking scene in the late 1990s with her first book, How to Eat, she's sold millions of cookbooks around the world and attracted countless viewers to her, her associated TV programs. Her latest book is called At My Table and continues her career theme of celebrating delicious but simple home cooking. Nigella and I sat down for a bite together this afternoon. Hi Nigella. Hello. I'm Lee. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Have a seat. Look at this lovely spread they've put on for us. Gorgeous. I made your sweet potato mac and cheese last night. Oh, did you? It is the greatest ever. Oh, that is a noble <laughs> thing to do in this heat. Would you rather be a guest and have somebody cook for you or would you rather be the host? I love cooking for people and I enjoy that. But in a way, um, it is also a treat to sit down and be given food and to be cooked for. And I think in a way what's quite nice in life, in normal life, is that you do a bit of both and you go to your friends' houses and they come to you. And so I suppose I think it's one of the things that I find very difficult because having anything just one way. You know, it's a bit like I love uh, going to restaurants, but I wouldn't want just to go to restaurants. I often think, like, would I prefer never to go to a restaurant again or never to cook? And I would much rather never go to a restaurant again, but I would be very sad if I n really couldn't ever. Do you find that your friends are ever intimidated to cook for you because you're who you no, are? No, because they're my friends. I mean, I've had my friends for, you know, so long that they don't, they don't know me as, they don't know me as that public person. I mean, I am the same person. I mean, they're in, and all my friends are in, you know, they, they're the ones who come and eat on my TV show. Um, so it, I sometimes get a bit alarmed if one of them's got a new boyfriend or girlfriend and they're coming and I think, oh no, they think I'm going to cook far more complicated food than I do. And when you remember great nights with your friends, the food is of course part of it, but mostly what you're remembering is just the vibe and the fact yeah, that you've had a laugh. Do you know, you're so right and that's something I say over and over again, that actually if the food is the best thing about the evening, then the evening has not been a success. And I say that as a greedy person. Do you ever have, like, a lot of us do, the experience of where you've tried to cook something, you've got a dozen people coming around and it's a bit of a disaster? Well, I've had various disasters in my cooking life. Um, I try, I have a rule which I, I don't know whether I always obey it, which is you're not allowed to apologise more than once. Because you know how we always say, um, oh, the potatoes were meant to be crisper, or, oh, well, I was meant to put the apricots in there and I did it the wrong time, so they're a bit too, um, they're a bit too solid still. And I think that you can do it once, but if you carry on doing it, it becomes, it's sort of impolite, because do, what do people say? What are they going to say to you? Yes, it is a bit disgusting. <laughs> um, or they didn't notice and they feel foolish. So I think you're only allowed to apologise once. Um, I mean, I have had things when, like, the oven hasn't worked and I haven't noticed or I haven't turned it on properly, and I've had to do so rectify that very quickly. I've had all sorts of things yeah, I've, happen. I've, I've served raw pasta because yeah. I forgot to put the burner on, yes. and then so you realise... Easily done. I wonder if that kind of thinking's come about because people... Um, you know, you can watch... How to, you can learn great cooking techniques now on YouTube or you can watch cooking yeah. shows and, and you know you learn about weird ingredients that you would have never heard of say 30 years ago so I wonder yeah. if that raises the bar and people feel more like oh, I need to cook more fancy food well I think it started off a long time ago when it when the whole thing and the thrust of uh, magazines and of TV shows was um, these are the tricks they're going to let you, it, you do restaurant style cooking at home so when I started I did it to say look Restaurant food is great in restaurants. It's not meant to be the sort of food you eat at home. And also, in restaurants, they have 30 people in the kitchen, um, and you don't. And so it, it's not feasible, it's not possible, and chefs don't cook like that at home. So, um, so I think that's part of it, and I think that now what feeds into it a bit, I suppose, is reality cooking shows, because people have this thing is, is that they think that people are coming to judge them. When people come around to eat, they want to have a nice time, and they're not looking to see, you know, to judge you on what you cooked. And, and if they are, then you've got the wrong friends. And particularly when you're in somebody's home, yes. there's some nostalgia buttons that get pushed around, you know, food like if you have yeah. lovely lasagna or lovely mac and yeah. cheese or something yes, like that. Yes, quite. I think that 
that you don't, there is something probably quite unrelaxing about going to someone's home if everyone got like individually plated up, little arranged things on a thing and then change. I mean, I don't, I think that as much as possible you want, you don't want to be up clearing the table all the time. Do you think there's a more important piece of furniture in the home than the kitchen table? Well, you know, I think the kitchen table and beds are the most important thing. And bath, actually. Very nice. There's a, bath. a few, actually. But I think they're not furniture. But I think, in a way, that's what makes... And I, actually, I would say it is the most important, because when I moved into my house, I had the table there, but we were sleeping on mattresses on the floor. And that is what made us fail to turn it into a home. And we probably could have kept, you know, once you did anything, why do people need a bed? Mattress is fine. Um, you know, so I think it is really important. You have had some rough times in your life. Your first husband died, you had a lot of tabloid intrusion in your life a few years ago. Did you find the joy that you take in food and in cooking something that you were able to turn to when times in your life were a bit rough? I think what is quite important is the necessity of cooking because I think, yes, jo cooking can be joyful, but the thing that which gets us through life, our lives is the things that just have to be done. So it doesn't, re even if you don't really feel like cooking, uh, you have to get dinner on the table and the act of doing that can um, give a sense of accomplishment and then you're drawn into the world of the food while cooking, which for me is always pleasurable. Plus it puts a structure it imposes a structure in your life because you have to get out of bed because you have to cook breakfast for people you know but i but you know when um i've always sort of slightly challenged the notion of cooking as therapeutic i certainly think certain forms of cooking i mean uh, when my um, husband was ill and i did you know do quite a bit of cooking then but and it was also because i think sometimes that in the modern ways that you should just sort of you know chill out and relax but actually when your mind is so full of busyness and my mind is to be honest I've got one of those chaotic minds that's always on um, you know going round in frenzied circles so but actually doing something quite simple with your hands like making some bread or stirring a risotto or chopping up vegetables for a soup you know simple things I don't mean a challenging thing all those things can actually they take they put your brain and your mind in your fingers and then your sense of smell and sense of taste rather than so you're not just sort of stewing uh, in your own juices up in your head. So I think that's useful, but I don't know that I've ever thought, oh, I need to cook to make myself feel better, but I certainly think cooking does make me feel better. It's been so lovely to meet you. Thank you so much.